Ah, oh, nothing like a good day's work fighting the Empire. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, I just got back from a crazy battle to tell you guys about lightsabers. Pretty cool helmet, huh? Maybe I'll make a video about this. But I'm leaving the vest on. So, I've had a lot of experience with lightsabers. I've released a few Star Wars films and each one I have a different experience with the lightsabers that I'm using and we will go over them today. The first lightsabers we will be reviewing are the lightsabers that I used in my first two Star Wars films. Star Wars in New York and Star Wars in Rome. Which are these janky plastic lightsabers you can get for $14 at like Walmart or Toys R Us. Just to give you an idea of how I will be reviewing them, this one has a bunch of rocks stuck inside of it and it won't go out all the way and it can't collapse any more than this. Jank sabers. To me, why these didn't work, and it was one of the biggest criticisms I got in those films, is that they're simply too short. I mean, this is a kid's toy, and so this is probably as big as an entire child's body, but if you wanna use a video prop for a lightsaber, this is a terrible option. Because if you look at the footage from those films, they look so tiny, I don't know. I feel like they're so short, it's incredibly distracting if you're trying to have a realistic Star Wars film. I will say the only plus side to this lightsaber is that they're indestructible. Every fight scene I've had with these, we were going full force and they, they never broke. And the next most obvious problem with these lightsabers is that they look like a plastic toy. Now if we get up close and personal with this lightsaber, it's super obvious that they're made of plastic. And they've got warning labels on here for children. You can see all the plastic seams and where the paint is getting chipped off of this shitty plastic. And there's always engraved words from the manufacturer. Ultimately, a terrible option for aesthetics. With the two Star Wars films that I shot using these lightsabers, every close-up to me is really hard to watch because it's so obvious that this is a plastic, janky lightsaber. And there's one specific close-up in my Star Wars and New York film where I took the original footage and I masked the lightsaber's body over itself twice just to cover up the warning labels about children. And so, in regards to a good film prop, these suck. Endurance, you could fight with these all day. Maybe for distance shots where you're fighting in the distance, these would rock. But in almost every other cinematic scenario, these are terrible including my biggest issue with them is that they don't produce any light. So I then have to animate it and then animate the surrounding light like it's glowing. Takes so much longer in the editing process. So these are also really bad for post-production because you'll have to do a lot of environmental lighting animation. Are you guys ready for what I consider the best prop lightsaber to use? This is the Ultra Saber. You can see how much bigger it is than these toy lightsabers. These Ultra Sabers are custom designed for short films and filmmaking. I used these lightsabers in my Star Wars in Thailand film, as well as a few Star Wars scenes from my 368 teaching video. And these look incredible. Instead of being made out of shitty plastic with a bunch of manufactured markings all over it, we have a nice heavy metal hilt. So you get this nice metal texture when you're doing close-ups that just looks very aesthetically pleasing. I do think they could make the button a lot less noticeable, but other than that, they look so good with all the scratched metal texture. So instead of having a really janky plastic lightsaber in your close-ups, you have a very realistic looking light sword. And like I said, these are made as film props. So the plastic that they're made out of is hard, indestructible plastic. So the actual blade is something that you can do film combat with. And they're very sturdy, like this blade will not come out of this hilt. So even though these are incredibly nice, your fight choreography can still remain very intense because these can impact against each other incredibly hard because they're designed to do that. I would say the one downside of these compared to the plastic ones is that you actually have to unscrew the hilt to have it separate from the blade. So if you want a shot of you force pulling your lightsaber into your hand, or even just an ignition shot of the blade coming out. For every single shot you do with those effects, you have to unscrew the blade from the hilt, which just adds some unnecessary time to production. So a small price you have to pay for having perfect stunt lightsabers. And my absolute favorite thing about these lightsabers is the fact that they do produce their own light. Let me, let me turn off a few of these. Ugh. Okay, are you ready? These are absolutely perfect when it comes to producing their own environmental light. Because since they are so bright, it affects the walls around you. 
the reflections in the water, how colored light bounces off of your face. So these produce the most realistic look of how a glowing beam of light would actually be. With the plastic lightsabers, you have to frame by frame mask in that environmental glow. This lightsaber does all of that for you and it saves you a ton of time in post-production. And also just the fact that this is a single point of light gives you a lot of cool options when it comes to cinematography. Cause this could be the only film light in the scene or this could complement a darker environment around you. Ooh. Ugh. And obviously, as I'm sure you guessed, the big downside to these is just that they're expensive. I think each one of these was around $100, but that's because they're completely customizable on the Ultra Saber website. You get to pick what length the blade is, what type of hilt that you get, the color of the saber, and how thick and hard the plastic is. In fact, I actually think these are a lot cheaper than they should be because they're hard metal, customizable, and incredibly sturdy. I personally think these are a great deal. Obviously different customizable hilts are a lot more expensive than others, but if you want to create some crazy unique lightsabers, the, the price goes up a lot. You know, I never thought I would be as nerdy as I am today. Never expected to make a lightsaber review video, but if you were ever to film a Star Wars short film and you need prop lightsabers, get the Ultra Saber. Listen, if you're on a budget, the plastic ones are a viable option, but if you have the resources necessary, I'll put these in the link in the description below. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, because of the rise of Skywalker, it is now the fall of Star Wars, so it's up to us to make our own Star Wars films. And my mission in life is to be educating people on how to make the best Star Wars short films ever. Watch my editing tutorials on how to be a Jedi Master. Expect a Star Wars film coming soon where I am an actual rebel pilot. And like this video, pause everything that you're doing right now and thumbs it up. And of course, I have to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform, Red Leader. You want your clients and people visiting your website know when they can book you and when your schedule is? Well, you can do just that with Squarespace. Make your bookings and schedulings public so people know when you're free to work with. You'll be a master of scheduling appointments. You'll quickly be able to understand who your audience is with Squarespace analytics. From where your traffic is coming from. Who's looking at your website? Your monthly, weekly, daily numbers. You will be completely up to date on all traffic sources coming into your website. And Squarespace takes guesswork out of search engine optimization, which basically means Squarespace makes your website a lot more discoverable by helping out with all of the SEO. So more people will find your website. Listen, Squarespace empowers people with creative ideas to succeed. So go to the top link in the description below or squarespace.com slash Will Carmack to get 10% off your first website or domain. All right, I got an Imperial battleship to destroy. Thank you for sponsoring this episode, Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day. I can show you...